Hello. In a previous video, we built a bond graph of the system depicted here, which required uh, changing the submodels of uh, some of the standard 20 sim bond graph library components. We uh, had a constant shaft speed going into a pump, and when we ran the simulation, we saw that the flow rate through the valve was increasing as well as the tank height, which started at an initial value of about 0.5 meters. Suppose I want to control the height of the tank by varying the pump shaft speed. So I should I can do that in 20 sim using uh, any one of a number of different types of controllers. I'm going to do a simple PID control. So what does simple PID control need? I need a reference height. I need to compare the height of the tank to some reference height and if there's an error there I need to uh, either crank up or dial back the pump speed. So I no longer want a constant pump speed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to detach the pump speed. Now, if I just delete this bond and have the flow source out on its own, I'm going to get an error when I check the model. Maybe I want to keep this thing around in case I want to put it back in again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this bond and insert not, I don't know why they call it not, uh, one junction. So this is a flow through one junction, the trivial kind that we often cross off when we're doing bond graphs. But I'm going to delete this bond. It's okay if I have the flow source going into a one junction. Okay, when I check the model, uh, the model won't care that this is off on its own because the one junction has a flow input and the SF is connected to something. My controller is going to vary the flow so I need a modulated flow source, which I will connect to the input port of the transformer, and I'll give this the name controlled pump speed. I can't put any spaces in in there. All right, so the modulated flow source says that PF is equal to the flow. Now, in the other flow source, there was a parameter flow that was defined up above. Here there's no parameter, so where does flow come from? You can get a variable uh, in the game by either declaring it in the top of the code block, or if I go down to the interface editor for this MSF element and double click on the element, if I define a signal and give it the name of that variable, so here there's a signal input called flow. And as soon as you, you know, define that signal, you've automatically declared the variable. So this uh, modulated flow source is going to expect a signal to come in from somewhere. All right. Um, I am going to get a reference signal in here. Instead of going into the bond graph library, I'm going to go into the signal library, and I'm going to go down under sources. I'm going to pull a constant block in. Now let me give myself some room here. I'll move the rest of the bond graph over. So this constant, uh, this is going to be my reference tank height. It's already set to 1, so I'll, I'll leave it there. Okay, and if I want I can call this tank ref height. Okay. So the error signal for the controller is going to be the tank reference. Let's say let's say the error signal is the tank height minus the reference. Tank height. Double click on the C element. In the previous video we declared a variable h and we said that the height is equal to the volume, which is the state divided by the area. I'm going to comment out this and I am going to pull the height h out of this C element as a signal. So I need to go down to the interface editor double click on the C there. Okay, there's already a power port for which I have effort p.e and p.f. There's already an output signal for the state variable so I can pull the state or the volume out and use that. I'm going to go up here to the add port button click on that and I'm going to add another signal. I'm going to call it H. The default is signal input. I'm going to make it a signal output. So as soon as I do that, I have a signal available, which I can compare to the reference. 
and the variable h is automatically declared by that signal. So now I'm going to insert a comparator. So if I go into the signal library, block diagram, plus minus, let me pull that into the workspace here. Now I said I wanted my error signal to be tank height minus the reference. So if I go into connection mode and I go over to the tank, click, drag. Now it's asking me what connection I want to make. Do I want to connect the tank state to the plus or the minus of the comparator? No, I want to connect the tank height to the plus. So I double click on the third option there. I want the reference height click and drag to go into the minus of the comparator. So now I've got tank height minus reference. And the error signal is what's going to go into my PID controller. Okay, now how do I do PID control? There's two ways I can do it. I can go into control. There's a library for controlled linear systems. Uh, there's more than one, one way to skin a cat, they say, and that's certainly true when it comes to 20 sim control. If I go into PID control, I've got continuous and discrete controllers. If I go into continuous, there's a number of options that have evolved over the years for PID control. The oldest and simplest are these blocks down here, PID. Now, where 20 sim came from, they typically represent PID control as what's called a series PID controller. In your controls course you may have seen PID control as KP times the error plus KI times the integral of the error plus KD times the derivative of the error. That's more of a parallel way of looking at it. Uh, if I double click on the PID block from 20SIM I don't see the KP, the KI, the KD. I see a bunch of time constants tau i and tau d, and these are related to how the Bode plot of the control system will fall off at different frequencies. Um, I'm not going to use that because it's at odds with how controls is taught at my institution. I'm going to bring in, I'm going to do this the hard way, I'm going to go into block diagram and I'm going to pull in a gain block for the proportional I'm going to pull in an integrator block for the integral, and I'm going to pull in a differentiate block for the D control. Okay, so I'm going to name this one uh, P, if that name is not already taken. Now, what's in this block? Uh, real K equals whatever. Let's say I want the proportional gain to be. Well, I'll just leave it here for now. I'll mess with the gains later. So this says that uh, output is k times input. I'll call this kp because it's a proportional gain. Okay. Um, bring that down here. Now the integral one, I will call that i. And if I double click on that, this integrator block takes an initial value and it simply integrates it using 20sim's internal integrate command. Uh, I'm going to multiply this by the proportion, the integral gain constant. So the output's going to be ki times the integral of the error signal. So I need to define up here a uh, integral gain term. I don't need to give it a value here. I can give it a value in the simulation window when I click show parameters. Okay, so now I have the integral term. In the derivative block, I can call that d because d isn't taken. And output is ddt, which is 20 sims internal command for numerical differentiation. Um, I'm going to declare real kd. So that's the derivative term. Okay, check that, no problems. Now what do I need to do? I need to take the error signal, which is the output of this comparator, I need to multiply it by the proportional gain. So I'm going to take the output of the plus minus block, and that's going to go into the input of the proportional gain block. 
Um, there's only one output from this comparator. So if I want to take the error signal and split it off to go into the I and the D blocks as well, I have to right click on the signal and I have to insert not splitter. Now I can go into connect mode and I can drag that into the I element, or sorry, into the integral block and also the derivative block. So here I have error kp times the error, ki times the integral of the error, kd times the derivative of the error. I need to add all those things up. So I need to give myself another comparator. So I'll take another plus minus, put it down, and put it over here. I need to go from the output of p to a plus. I need to go from the output of the i to another plus. You see, I can have an infinite number of uh, pluses in this plus minus block. It's not just two inputs. Go from the derivative to plus. Now I'm adding all those things together, and I will take the output, and that's what's going to go into my controlled pump speed modulated flow source. Okay, so now I've got a closed loop controller here. If I start the simulator, now here's the open loop performance we had before. Tank height uh, starts at 0.5, it goes up to 0.9. Uh, if I go into the parameters block and I set the, the gains, I've played around with this already, I'm going to set the derivative gain to 10, the integral gain to 1, and the proportional gain to 10. Uh, tank reference height is 1, that's what I wanted. All my parameters from before are fine. I still have the initial tank height of 0.4. This I initial, that's the initial value of the error signal um, for the integral block. I suppose I could set that equal to, well the first value of the error signal is going to be the desired tank height of 1 minus the initial of 0.4. Um, I'll, I'll leave that as 0. Now I'll hit play again and uh, we can see that this thing appears to have gone unstable. Okay, so one reason this may be going unstable is because if I go back and look at the simulator window for the pump shaft speed, uh, over 40 seconds things are getting completely out of hand here. Let me just run this for 10 seconds and see what's happening. My initial error signal is going to be negative because the tank height is less than the reference. And I set this up so that the error signal was tank height minus reference. So I'm going to have an initial negative error signal. So this thing's going to call for a negative pump speed. Now physically, that's probably uh, not so good. The pump's running backwards. The nonlinear valve ends up sucking fluid in from the atmosphere. Um, so there's not enough water in the tank. So I'd like a positive error signal. So I'm going to switch this around so that I have tank reference height going into the plus and the tank height oops, let me grab the actual tank height here and I want the tank height going in as the minus. Okay, so let's try that. So now we're going to start off with an initial error signal uh, which is positive and we're going to have a positive pump speed. I'm going to put a signal limiter in here as well. I'm going to not allow the pump speed to go below zero. Okay, so if there's too much water in the tank, the pump will simply stop and water will drain out the valve. Um, okay, so if I go into block diagram nonlinear, there is a signal limiter, a plain old signal limiter down here somewhere. Let's see, signal limiter, limit. If I drag this and I drag it right onto this signal, it'll put it right into the signal. And I can limit it to a maximum of, uh, let's see, I don't know, 20 radians per second. I can make the minimum equal to zero. Okay, so now I'll, with the signal limiter, I'll try this system once again. So I'll check the model. I will reset the old garbage simulation. Uh, 
set my derivative and proportionals back to 10. And let's hit play. Okay, so after 10 seconds, I can see that the tank height is going up. The pump shaft speed is varying. I'm going to keep clicking this and keep adding 10 more seconds onto the simulation. Okay, so we see that the tank height is actually in 40 seconds it got up to well there was a little bit of overshoot but by 60 seconds I appear to have established a fairly constant tank height of 1 meter. Uh, I can see the pump shaft speed topped out near 5 and settles out to a steady state of just below 3. I can play with the gains and maybe uh, you know, increase the rise time, get myself up to the desired tank height a bit uh, more quickly. So that's how you can do quick and dirty uh, closed loop PID control in 20 sim just by putting the block diagram right on top of your bond graph.